the Chow Do Podcast, episode number 34. Third time's the charm. Definitely How is. How are you doing, Alexander? Doing pretty well. How are you? Pretty decent. How's our There's guest, Drake? Us. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Drake. <laughs> Drake What's going on? from the uh, College Dropouts podcast. R.I.P. 2019 to 2019. He's here to join us as our first guest ever. What's going on, ladies and gents? It was a good two-month run. Right? Two months? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I miss it. You want to know a fun fact? This is episode number 34. And people called Drake on the streets. But Nothing. Wait, they call him what? Big Poppy. Well, I mean, he I'm is... I was a David Ortiz joke. Episode 34. Four copies on the podcast. Oh my goodness, the, the lag is for real, <laughs> man. Um, but Drake's my hog of the week, so Drake's your hog of the week. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> Drake is the week then. Yeah, the hog of the week. Well, my right, hog Alexander. of the week is one because I never got to do it. Yeah, Drake's hair player. Alex, what have you been playing slash watching? Uh, this week. I haven't really been playing much other than World of Warcraft. Uh, I did play the Madden beta, Madden 20 beta. You. Yeah. Um, I will say, if you like Madden 19, if you were expecting Madden 19 version 2.0, it's not that. It's totally <laughs> different. Yeah, it it's really good. There were a couple things that I would change about it, and I think the community kind of, felt those and was expressing those in EA's forums. But in general, it's, it's an improvement over Madden 19 for real. And, uh, world of Warcraft, obviously big part of it too. Uh, watching, I watched, uh, Spider-Man into the, uh, into the spider verse. Finally, for the first time, I loved it. It was great. Probably my favorite Spider-Man movie ever. And that's saying a lot. Cause I thought Spider-Man two, the Tobey Maguire one, I thought that was like kind of the, the peak, but uh, Spider Man three, no Tobey Spider Maguire, no Spider Man three was not the peak. That it got kind of sloppy in three. I I know what they were going for in three, but it got a little sloppy. Hey, that's the best version of Venom. Yeah, well, speaking of superhero movies, I want to see Dark Phoenix, but I fell way behind on the X Men movies, so it I purchased. Matter. I get that. So I purchased the original trilogy on Blu-ray, working my way through that, and then I'm going to watch the next trilogy on yeah. Blu-ray, and then from there, I'll watch Dark I mean, Phoenix. I'm trying to be offensive, but you'll get to the point to where you realize it's a giant waste of time to watch all the movies because they erase half the things that happen and make up stuff. That's true. Well, that's been what I've been watching and playing this week. Andy, what have you been watching? What have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing Mario Odyssey in NHL 19. Good choices. Um, watching, I watched Murder Mystery, the new Netflix original. That's Ooh. The, the record is most watched thing opening weekend on Netflix ever. Um, it was all right. I gave it a four out of 10. Good for Adam Sandler. Uh, 21 and over, which is just like a college party movie. Yeah. I also gave it a four out of 10. Okay. For those wondering. And then I watched the then movie about a girl's cancer, so I cried a bit. Okay. And I get that six out. But if you want more ratings than that, check out our letterboxed. Our links are in the description. Oh Box yeah. Page, my page. Yeah, check us out on Letterboxd. I I try to rate every single movie I watch in there from now on. I I know that Drake, Drake also has Letterboxd. Yeah, Drake has one out. too. Yeah, we'll yeah, have to catch up like on it. my watching. I had to do some catching up too. Drake, what have you been playing? What have you been watching? I, obviously, Destiny. I heard you playing Destiny. Yeah, I've been playing Destiny too. I just started it yesterday. Mm -hmm. Played it with one of our friends, Wes. It's really fun. I didn't think I would like it as much as I do, but it has goat potential. And I've been watching Hero Inc. What is that? Hero Inc. is uh, it's like a show about tattoo artists. Oh. It's this like shop. And they do like tattoos on first responders and firefighters and military people, stuff like that. On heroes. 
that don't wear capes. <laughs> facts. It actually sounds, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely facts. I'm 100% in agreement with that. But it sounds like a cool show. They used to yeah, have this really one neat. on Spike TV. It was called uh, Tattoo mm-hmm. Rescue. And it was kind of hokey, but <laughs> I really, it was really hokey. But <laughs> hear me out on this. Is it this? <laughs> Is it the same guy's restaurant? No, it's not. But it was like this guy. He's like, yo, my name is Joey Tattoo. I go around and I save tattoo shops. He'd go in and be like, why are you using the dirty needles? You know, he's like really like overplaying the New York thing. The cool thing was like the art. Like my wife recently got a tattoo and I enjoyed going to tattoo. I don't have any ink, so did period. Drake, Drake recently got a tattoo. I saw that. He got, I think his third or fourth tattoo, right? Yeah, I have three it's, now. Yeah, yeah, I saw that on Instagram, and I was, I was like, yeah, you know, that's really cool, but I, I love the art of it. Like, that's yeah. the cool part about it. It's like it's, it's art, and I enjoy that. So, it's a neat. Uh, I also have like tattoo fever. Whenever I get one, I just want another. Yeah, it's I was definitely. A real thing. I was just about to say that because, like, I was gonna be like, so. Do you already want to get another one? Because my wife got her second one recently. No, her third. And she's already wanted to get four. You know, like she's already, yeah. yeah. I mean, now she only got the one. I I do. I have the Bubba Sparks tattoo on my butt, but that's it. And I don't tell many people about that one, but. (laughs) I don't have any tattoos, but I'm planning on getting some. Sometimes you regret it. The Bubba Sparks tattoo definitely didn't work uh, out. I just want to get one and then not, just not tell anybody. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, it, it is kind of cool. Like I went to a business meeting one time and it was like a business meeting where we traveled and we were like all staying in the same hotel. And, um, this one guy, he was like really like really conservative, kind of reserved all that. And there was a pool at the hotel. So we go down, we're all hanging out at the pool. This guy takes his shirt off and he's got like the full tuxedo like tattoo thing going on, but it's cut off at the sleeve, right? And you'd never yeah. know he had it. He never talked Our, about uh, it. Me and Drake's principal, well, ex-principal, rest in peace, he got fired. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he has like full sleeves. They like wear suits during school. Like I saw him at the movie theater and he has like full sleeves. A lot of people do it, man. A lot of people do it. A lot of professionals. Like if you ever see a, a businessman who never wears a short sleeve shirt here in Florida, chances are he's doing it because he's got like a full sleeve. Yeah, I wore on. hoodies in Florida that one week. That was weird, dude. I still don't know how you didn't get like <laughs> have a heat stroke because we're driving around in my car that has no AC and you're wearing a hoodie and you're like, it's kind of hot out. Is it always this hot? I'm like, take your hoodie. I off, said it once. You like over exaggerate. <laughs> I was just like. That's not what I meant, but you over exaggerate it. <laughs> Whatever, dude. It was like three in the morning, and it just felt like this. Like it felt like it was still daytime. Like the temperature never changed. You're wearing a hoodie in Florida. I wear a hoodie in all August. The time. It was either July or August. It was July, I think. It was whenever Madden came out, so August, I guess. It was like August first, July thirty first, somewhere around there. Because I remember the morning yeah. you showed up, uh, the morning before you showed up, I got my code for Madden. Hoping that happens again this year. Come on, EA. Shout to the Orange Cinema, whatever it's called. West Orange 5 Cinema, dude. Yeah. It is the only movie theater here in my area where they let you bring your own alcohol. So a lot of people will go to a gas station and they will buy a bunch of tall boys and then they'll go watch a movie in West Orange 5 and get lit. I respect We had it. a... Uh... That reminded me, we had a meeting at work, and they were showing off, off all the other cool stuff that we don't have because our th- theater sucks. And they have, like, you know, like the ices. They have Jack and Coke flavored ices, which acts as Jack Daniels. That was like, man, I got to try that out. I would, I would love a Jack Daniels icy. <clears throat> so then me and a buddy tried it, uh, making one. How'd that go? It, I mean, it was pretty good, as 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 well as you'd think it would go. But it was I mean, super watered down. It wasn't like icy flavor though. Like it was less yeah. icy, but you know it's fine. We have a uh, listener question. 
a oh, that's question. right. We do have one, yeah. And Drake's favorite thing about our podcast we used to have is talking basketball. So the listener asked Brian <laughs> Shoop, or Shope, where do you think Kyrie will end up, Drake? Wherever he wants to go. I'm done. <laughs> Come on, Drake, give us some more. Expand on it. <laughs> um... Brooklyn. I don't know. That's just what I've heard. I mean, it's a solid pick. Who do you think, Alexander? You know, it's really tough. I feel like there's about four teams that could go between. So earlier this week, I would have told you Brooklyn because it felt like it was an amicable relationship. And today... It's reported that Brooklyn might not be very interested in him if he can't draw <laughs> another star like Kevin Durant or like Jimmy Butler or something. So it, it appears that Brooklyn's kind of half-hearted in it. I think he's already... I don't think he's burnt the bridge with the Celtics, right? Yeah, he has. Okay, I don't think so. I think they take he him back. He has told higher-ups that he won't resign. Well, then there you go. So he's burnt the bridge with Boston, which I really felt was the best destination for him. I want to make that really clear. I feel like the best destination for him was to stay in Boston if he wanted to be the best player on one team. But Brooklyn would have been enticing because, you know, Brooklyn's pretty good considering what they have. Uh, at this point in time, if I had to put money on it, I'd say the New York Knicks. I feel like it will be very much like Amari Stoudemire when he hit free agency about 10 years ago or so. And there was a limited market for him. He had kind of burnt the bridge with Phoenix. Phoenix wasn't really interested. Other teams had reservations because of his loyalty issues and his knee issues. New York needed a superstar. They didn't get anybody big. And I feel like that's going to be the same thing here. Like, New York's going to strike out. I feel like Kyrie and New York will be f friends for a little bit. And then they'll move on. Andy, what do you think? I'm going Brooklyn, 100,000%. Okay. Drake stole it. 100,000. So, follow up to that for both of you that are picking Brooklyn. What do you think happens to D'Angelo Russell? Because I've seen Brooklyn fans on both sides saying they can play together, they can't. And I've heard rumors going both ways, whether Russell would want to move on or he if won't. he'd want to play. He won't, they won't be together. I don't think so either. D'Angelo either goes to, in my case, being a biased fan, Boston, and they just switch teams. That's one. Or, yeah. best case scenario as an unbiased basketball fan, he should go to Indiana. That's not a bad destination. I feel like him and Oladipo would make a good backcourt. Another yeah. candidate, I think, just and, and partly because I live in the area, but I've heard a lot of rumblings that the Orlando Magic might be interested in D'Angelo Russell if he yeah, were to hit the open market. That, they, uh, that Aaron Gordon's on the market. I don't think so, but, I mean, maybe. You, you never there's, know in the NBA, There's rumbles dude. that they want to trade up, and they were like, they would throw in Aaron Gordon as a piece to move up. Possibly. I mean, I could see that to an extent, but I think right now the Magic's main concern is retaining the roster they have, getting yeah. a good draft pick, and then hopefully developing those players to move up further. I mean, they have a solid young core. It's solid. I feel like it could be better. I, I still feel like the biggest misstep they ever made in that rebuild was getting rid of Old Depot yeah. and um, Sabonis, who I thought could have been a very good player both for them off the bench. For Indiana. Yeah, and I, I felt like both of those guys could have been major contributors in Orlando. One, Old Depot as a starter, obviously. Sabonis would have been a great yeah. big off of the bench. He has a lot to offer off the bench. And you traded that for a three quarters of a year rental of Serge Ibaka that turned into Terrence Ross, which I mean, I'm sorry. I love you, Terrence Ross, but you're Terrence hey, Ross. Terrence Ross had a pretty good year. This you know what they could have done? They could have flipped Fournier. Evan Fournier had trade value. 
they wouldn't have been able to get Ibaka, but you know, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. They really felt like Ibaka would have played best next to Vucevic. What they found out is it was a terrible front court. It was yeah. it was awful. Those two guys did not work together as as most people Ibaka's, thought they would. That seems to be like Ibaka's story is just being a part of a terrible front court. I mean, he's there was at one point where he's good at some things, but was the magic where they had him and Bismack Biombo on the same team. Yeah, well, that was the idea. It was they traded old it was really yeah. weird, dude. Like they had this weird three-headed monster thing going on which worked they just in the had late a, 90s. A bunch but... of power fours. Yeah, they they had um they traded Old Depot for Bismack. Uh not Bismack for Ibaka. Then they signed Bismack Biombo in free agency and they were bringing Bismack Biombo off the bench as a center and a power forward and it, it just didn't work. It just didn't work. They ended up dumping that contract to and then, uh, Charlotte for nothing. Going back to D'Angelo before we move on. The Phoenix, but according to rumors, he doesn't want to go there. So, rip that. Well, um, who wants to go to Phoenix? I mean... I like their colors. They have like, cool uniforms, they... but... <laughs> That's about know. it. It's hot as hell. <laughs> They need a point guard, and we'll get to that later. I mean, that's fair. I, I know that uh, LeVar Ball's kid, you know, the the oldest one, really wanted to apparently play in Phoenix, but that didn't work out. I don't know. M- moving on to entertainment. Oh. A thing that I care about a lot. Yeah. New World of Warcraft update: Rise of as as I was going to say Azeroth, but then I realized that's not what that says. Ashara, yeah, releases June twenty fifth. Content added is almost on par with that of an expansion. We play it to make a long story long. Mm. No. Well, I felt the need to bring this up. Maybe Drake will have some kind of input on it. Maybe he's played World of Warcraft. Drake, have you played World of Warcraft ever? Okay. No, I don't even know. Drake just I've got watched... Xbox like two years ago. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, one year. Sorry. <laughs> you watched what, Drake? The like part of the stream that I watched of yours, Alex. That's the first time I've ever seen that game in my entire life. Wow. Wow. Not even yeah. the South... Huh? Not even the South Park episode. No, not a clue. Wow, that's pretty impressive, but I just wanted to call this out because I know we have some people who follow World of Warcraft that listen to the podcast. There have been many people who have asked for Andy to play this game and continue to ask for Andy to play this game. (laughs) And I thought this was interesting because this is not a normal thing for World of Warcraft to do. In it's less than a year into the Battle for Azeroth expansion, they're releasing this major update. It's going to be patch 8.2. I will tell you, as someone who plays the game a lot, a lot of people have been anticipating this heavily. There's been a lot of speculation around there, um, around this release. And I mean, you get two whole new zones, a whole new aspect of a campaign, a new raid, a new dungeon. Massive overhaul, the Azerite battle um, armor system. I mean, it, it's it's a lot, dude. It, it feels reactive to me. To um, the new Final Fantasy fourteen expansion that's coming out, Shadowbreakers. Because that has a lot of hype around it right now. Like Final, Four, Final Fantasy fourteen has gotten a huge resurgence in the last year. It's not anywhere near the player base of wow but i feel like this is a very reactive thing and it's also like kind of indicative of the whole games as a service thing that we always talk about on this podcast like this is massive update for free it's almost on par with that of an expansion that you usually pay 60 bucks for so good news for wow fans and you still have to pay a monthly price for yeah, there there is still a fourteen ninety nine a month fee, so I guess I mean, technically. <sighs> okay, I mean, yeah, but PlayStation requires you to have 
PlayStation Plus to play online and I, I mean, haven't had I, Xbox Live Gold for like eight months and I really still yeah I haven't had PlayStation Plus uh, for a while like I kind of I let mine lapse I didn't let my Nintendo one lapse but I let PlayStation lapse because I found what I was doing was I was paying for the service where I was only playing single player games uh, Drake what consoles do you have right. man Xbox Me? oh Drake that's it. I just, uh, yeah, I just renewed my no oh, okay. Xbox Live the other day. So there you go. Most people Heck buy yeah. it. Yeah, I got. So I've played video games my like my entire life. I've had like a PS2 and played Nintendo stuff like that. But I haven't like online gamed, which is why I'm not necessarily a gamer. I've always played sports. So like the <laughs> literally cool. since like last Christmas is when I not last Christmas, the Christmas before is whenever I started like actually gaming oh okay well sports gaming is still gaming there's yeah. like a huge community of people out there who only play sports games like i have people that follow me on my youtube channel and they strictly play sports games like there's one guy this guy goes back and he buys all the old uh shout out to sports network if if you're out there but uh he goes out and he buys like all the nba 2ks and maddens like he's trying to collect all of them and he plays them all. And I'm like, that's crazy, man. Like, who wants to play NBA 2K14? But this guy does it. So, anyway, moving on. Andy, I wanted to get your perspective on this one. Because you work in the movie industry. And then I also want to get Drake's perspective. Because he, he seems like kind of a movie guy, too. Avengers Endgame. They're re-releasing it in theaters already. And they're adding more, like, deleted scenes at the end. And then a, a post credits like teaser thing, and they haven't said anything else. Like they they're saying it is an extended cut. This movie's already three plus hours long, but it's they're bringing it back solely for a post credit scene and a deleted scene that they're going to show after the credits. Like, what what do you think about that? To me, it just seems like a money grab. Uh, my thing on it i say cash grab ea type <laughs> EA. <S> word. It's, <laughs> so, it's so ea like i that's the first thing that jumped in my head like this is something ea would do ea's been talking to disney like listen <laughs> if you put pack <laughs> in <your> movies <laughs> <laughs> iron man elite <laughs> elite round oh thanos <laughs> So let me ask you, as someone who, how many, I always forget how many, how many screens are in your movie theater? 12. How many do you think would be dedicated to this? Two. Two? That seems Three, reasonable. One. Two for the opening weekend. And then if it's any, like it depend on business. Yeah. I just feel like it's too soon. I mean, I feel like there are people who will buy this. And, I mean, if we're being honestly being honest about it i doubt we get it i feel like there are some movie theaters that wouldn't bother to put this like west orange five ain't happening pal they only got five my, screens my theater has no competition so yeah. we don't really do any we had isle dogs surprisingly Ooh, that's a good movie um it sold us sold us solid nine tickets in total to that so that's my theater what do you mean we don't have competition you ever been in the Maiden Alley? I'm sorry. There's a a theater downtown that plays <laughs> terrible movies. By the way, terrible. Okay. Have you seen the list of movies? Yeah, I check their website once a week. They're not terrible. They play like 80s movies and 90s movies, and they play indie movies. Like they played uh, Shape of Water there. Mm -hmm. Um, they played the movie where. Eddie Murphy is like the prince from Africa coming to America. They put that there. It's just like that, a bunch of weird stuff. That's a good one. Yeah. Like they, it's not, they don't play anything new. It um, sounds eclectic. Like an that's eclectic not like a, mix. That's not any competition. And yeah. then the next co closest theater is the one that's like 30 minutes away that has only two screens that only plays the biggest movie that's on. So there's no, no competition. No, the one close to your house. Yeah. Yeah. 
What's the the princess or something? Princess something. Yeah, the one I drive past every day to go to my awful theater. <laughs> Damn. If we get the new Avengers, I'll watch it because I didn't the first time. And I'm kind of the first time either. So I feel like for people like Drake who didn't see it the first time, it makes a little bit of sense. So maybe you get people in like that. Yeah. But I'll be honest, personal take here. I watched it one time in theaters with my wife. I paid $9 to watch it, as did my wife. And it could be on sale on Blu-ray for $10 and I wouldn't buy it. I have no desire to watch the movie again. Like once you watch it, like you've watched it. I just don't feel like those movies have any. Alex, listen, it's better than Shawshank Redemption. According to the guy I work with that made So when you told me that story (laughs) (laughs) and Andy, feel free to, to tell people about the story but when you told me that story it made me so angry and it also made me sad that this guy actually believed that nonsense i don't remember how it went but he was like shosh shanks a dumb prison yeah avengers in games greatest movie ever basically (sighs) even if you hate shawshank redemption i feel like you could have a better favorite movie than avengers endgame Like, let me ask Drake, what's your favorite movie of all time? What's my favorite movie of all time? Yeah. Dazed and Confused. Are you for real? Yeah, that's when we're watching it. We watched it. See, that's that's better than Avengers Endgame. <laughs> Alexander's, te- technically, via my rating system, mm-hmm. your favorite movie of all time is on par. It gave, gave both six out of tens. Wait, what? I gave if I'm talking about Infinity War, but I because I'm thinking Endgame. But I gave Midnight Cowboy and Infinity War six out of tens. I assume Endgame isn't any better. Or... Okay, well, whatever, dude. Midnight Cowboy is amazing. <laughs> it's a terrific movie. <laughs> I mean, it is. You know, I like it. It's just you know. Here, here's the thing. Like people still watch Gone with the Wind. People still watch. City Lights, Charlie Chaplin movie, right? People still watch Midnight Cowboy, Titanic, even. Okay, I don't, I hate Titanic, but people still watch it. It's been out for like 20 years, maybe 25 at this point. Nobody's watching Avengers Endgame in mass in 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. It's Titanic's 22 years. Okay, there you go. I mean, like, but I don't even think in 22 years people are going to be talking about Avengers Endgame. I think it's just kind of a popcorn movie. I'd put it on par with The Meg. No, I mean, that. Just I'm not something. Disagree with that one. I, I, I think. Hey, Drake, do you have any headphones? By the way, you're echoing a bit. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> correct. I don't know. Look. Like I think the CGI affects the the, the watchability in the future though, because there's gonna be a point where people are like, like us looking back, like going back to like when we talked about Dread. Yeah, it may have been awesome at the time. I don't remember. I didn't watch it back then. Um, but like, as CGI gets better, looking back on heavy CGI movies, you know. No, you're right. So which kind of ex- hurts it for future proofing it. Yeah. So like, for example, uh, X-Men, the first one I was talking about watching it earlier, like came out in 2000. It has oh. quite a bit of CGI in it and some of it's aged well and some of it hasn't. I mean, it just, it, it depends, dude. Like even like, Another movie I brought up earlier, the the Tobey Maguire Spider Man movies, the CG on that's kind of, um, <laughs> I have no idea what that was, uh, the the CG Aliens. <laughs> that was hilarious, um, but yeah, like the the CGI on you know the original Spider Man movies isn't so great, uh, but then like you brought up Alien or Aliens, I don't I don't remember Did Aliens. I? Oh, I thought you said Aliens. When? Like five seconds ago, ten seconds ago. 
I, I don't think I did. Okay, my oh, bad. No, I was, oh, yeah, I did. Yes, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was talking about the noise. Not the, not the oh, oh, yeah, because I was going to say, like, Alien is a good example of something that didn't have CGI, but it had, like, live action special effects that honestly have not aged that well. You know, practical so like, effects. Yeah, it just it de- it depends, dude. Like so, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, like I don't know. You gotta take on the street. I'm gonna be honest. I was looking for headphones. I don't know what's going on. All right, I gotcha. <laughs> I don't have headphones. We just figured it out. Well, it's fine now. So, so DC Film Club this week. It was <clears throat> Drake's pick. Heck yeah. Our lovely guest. Um, if you haven't watched it, Daisy Fuse is a coming age film following a group of kids on their last day of school in 1970s, directed by Richard Linklater. And, uh, yeah, that, that's the movie. What do you think of it, Drake? I mean, you said earlier it's your favorite movie of all time. Yeah, it's I, I just love it. It's funny. It's easy to watch. Was there any reason besides that that you brought it to us? No, I just figured. I honestly assumed. I knew. I think I knew that you watched it. Yeah, I've but I didn't know that it was like super well known. I mean, I know it's like well known, but not like everyone has seen it. So I'd. This you know, is since Alexander's I watched it, first. Time. Yeah, yes. I've never seen this before. Well, yeah, because my parents showed it to me, so I figured people our age, people. However old, might have not seen it, and it's my favorite movie of all time, just because of what it is, what it represents. Yeah, man. Go back to that high school, high school, get high school days. So, what'd you think of first time viewing it, Alexander? I have a lot of thoughts on it, actually. So, I thought it was the cinematography was really good on it. I really like yeah. it. Like they, it really just felt like Americana, dude. Have you ever seen a Linklater film? I might have, but I can't like name one. Like I, I'd hate to tell uh, you no. Before but... sunset, before sunrise, that trilogy of love movies. No, um, I didn't see those. He did Boyhood. Um, School of Rock. <laughs> I've seen that one. Um, what was the other? His Slacker is another famous one of his. I've seen that one as well. Yeah, that's him. But this one in particular, I love the way they filmed it. A lot of the shots really brought me back to my childhood, early, early childhood in the mid eighties. Like it really reminded me cause it wasn't the mid eighties, believe it or not, really just wasn't that different than the late seventies. Like I, I loved how there, there was like a lot of shots of like businesses that were mom and pop businesses. It wasn't yeah. like a bunch of chains. Like nowadays you when you what? drive around, it's like a lot of chains. But like when I was a kid, I remember yeah. like businesses had character, like the different signs. Yeah. You know, you know what's it, crazy about it. Mm-hmm. You know what city that they're in in the movie? What city is it that they're in? Austin, Texas. That would make sense because, like, I don't know how it is now, but I know that for a long – because I know a a lot of people who are based out of Austin. For a long time, like, as big as Austin is, like, they've pushed out big businesses. Like, they want it to stay, like, kind of a small-town feel. And, like, just a lot of the stuff that – you know, because a lot of the movie is these kids driving around town, like, trying to find something to do. And – for the first like half of the movie, you sit there and you go like, is there really a purpose to this movie? Like, is there any kind of like major meaning behind it? But after a while, like I kind of settled in and I'm like, you know what? This doesn't, it's not so different than my high school days. Like granted, I wasn't smoking weed and drinking and, and having crazy parties. Like I was a nerd, but there were a lot of nights where I would hang out with my friends. And we'd just be driving around trying to find something to do. <laughs> right. So like, I kind of like that aspect of it. Um, and then uh, like, there is a good meaning to it. It's just not, it doesn't hit you over the head. Like at the very end when they're on the football field and that one character whose name I forget at the moment gives that speech about like, I'm just trying to have the best time. Yeah. He's, he's like, I'm just trying to have the best time I can have while I'm stuck here. And I'm trying to uh... do the best I can while I'm stuck here. 
And it's like it that is high school that. life for you. Like you can't move away. It's not like college where you get to choose where you go to college and like even some people don't have that choice. But like I mean the same the same scene, Pink's line stands out to me. And it's if I look back and I say this is the happy time, happiest time of my life, remind me to kill myself. Bingo. Like that really hit me hard because like high school was not the best time of my life. Like I like to always think that the next next best thing is around the corner. Like I always live by the saying you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Right. It's like high school was good for me and I had a lot of fun in high school, but when that was over, I left it behind, man. Like I went on to college and after college I went out and I got a job. I got new friends, young professional friends, built relationships, so you know, you like moved up the corporate ladder on hay in the movie. <laughs> So, like, what's cool about his character all right, is... All right, all right, Yeah, like, but his character is really useful in this movie because he's kind of a foil to the other characters. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want to move beyond that. Like, he's stuck. Like, he's stuck yeah. in high school. Like, he wants to relive those glory days. And there's a lot of people out there like it. And I'm not even saying that's a bad thing. He's obviously having a good time doing that. And there are some people that that's their personality. But, like, me, dude, after high school, I was like... Let's do the next thing. Like, yeah. let's fly higher, you know? And I think it's a good message for young people. And I think that's what makes this movie timeless and a piece of Americana is the message that like, dude, have a blast in high school. Enjoy it. Yeah. Right. Cause there's some really good things to it, but just remember like, that's not as high as you're going to fly, man. There's so much more out there for you. So overall, really good movie cast was amazing. Yeah. And I have to mention this. I know it's not an original score, but the soundtrack that they put together for yeah, this movie, it's, really good. it's iconic, dude. Iconic. I literally have the playlist on my phone. The best, uh, it's a good the best playlist. actor in it is obviously Mila Djokovic, Javo, Javovic or something like that. <laughs> I don't know how to say your name. I really goof that. Javovic? I'm doing off the top of my head. I think it's Jovovich. The the star from the great Resident Evil movie. I like those movies. I realize they're not yeah. great, but I like them. I you talked about him, but there's like other stuff. Like, like Pink is like you know trying to find the next best thing. But then there's the other story, Mitch, aka Tim Luncecum, where he's just trying to like fit in, and it kind of like weaves a story of like different stages where he's trying to fit in. Pink is trying to move on, and then Matthew McConaughey. I don't think I remember his character's name. He's trying to like he's trying to stay with the good, good old times. Yeah, I mean, like the Mitch character, I like him because you know, here's this new scary environment, and he jumps in. He jumps yeah. into it head first, and his friends aren't yeah, willing to do that. For you. Yeah, but like. <laughs> That's what makes him such an endearing character in this movie yeah. is that he's fearless. Like, you know what? Let me just let me just go for it, dude. Like, yeah. what's the worst that can happen? Whereas his friends are so pensive and even they're kind of stuck in that middle school mentality. Like they didn't want to leave the middle I school mean, dance yeah. and all that. You know, I don't know, man. It's it's they're a really cool like, movie uh, about like growing Mitch up. Mitch kind of conforms and he like he runs but then you have Pink, he doesn't want to conform with the rules. He's like, I don't want to sign this stupid piece of paper. I want to live life. Yeah. But even though Mitch conforms, he does pull that prank about three quarters of the way of, through. He kind of. Yeah. Like, and like, he kind of rebels a little bit, which tells you he's, he's kind of got a mind for himself. You know, like I like that. Really good movie, man. Really good movie. I'm surprised I haven't seen it before. And I see why there are so many people who rate this like in their top 10 movies and things like that. I could, I could totally see that. Do you have anything to add? Drake? Nope. I like what y'all said. That's why, I mean, I, I gave you the, the movie as a, a listener, not like a, someone that's about yeah. to be on the show. That way I could see how you felt about it. Cause obviously it's my favorite movie of all time. So with that being said, rated out of 10. Drake. What? Ready to add ten. Really? <laughs> ten out of ten. Yeah. Ten out of ten. I have to ask. 
Alex refuses to write things 10. Well, because I don't think there's such thing as a perfect movie, dude. If I had to pick a perfect movie, something that's a 10 out of 10, it's going to be 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah, that movie's awesome. Yeah. All right, Alexander, how to 10. I feel like I'm underselling it after hearing 10 out of 10, but 7.5 out of 10. It's great. If you haven't seen it, you got to see it. And, you know, as I do, every single film club. <laughs> it's not even like a bit, but it just happens. My rating is always lower. I'm sorry, Drake. But I'm. it's on par with Midnight Cowboy and Avengers Infinity War. I gave it a 6 out of 10. We've talked about this. Your 6 out of 10 is that people should watch it, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still a good movie. See, I'm, there's, I'm, um, I'm with there's some that, things. Yeah. There, there's some things that ruin, not ruin, but like affect my rating. Like the, like the Tim Lentz of me calling Mitch, that kind of brings me out of the movie. And also, <laughs> the second time I watched this, and it happened again, when the George Lopez theme song starts playing, I just die laughing, and it brings me out of the movie. I get that. I get that. It was more of like a personal reason, but I still, I don't know, it's just like that. Yeah, you know, I think I do kind of want to um, expand on what Drake said about your rating. Like, 6 out of 10 for me, and, like, I want to be clear. Like, I've had people actually ask me about this. Like, when I rate something, anything over 5, I'm saying you should probably check it out. Yeah. If I give it under a 5, beware, bro. It's at your own <laughs> risk. Like, and, and if it's something, wow. like, if I were to rate something a 5 out of 10, I would tell you it's a coin flip. Like, either you're going to like it or not like it you probably won't love it my but rating I, to explain it is a one if i genuinely hate the movie yeah it di- like actually dislike the movie a two bad movie a three a, it's also like a but less bad a four can be that i liked it but i don't think it's a good movie if that makes any sense. yeah or it's also like a below average movie. Five is like average as a standout. Six, like six on can be a good movie. Yeah. They're all good movies that rate six on. It's just like, I don't know, six is like, it's all right, but I liked it. And yeah. it's like, keeps on getting better. I don't know. We just don't review a lot of trash here on DCD Film Club. Like, <laughs> Freddy Got Fingered was definitely the worst Let's... of the worst. <laughs> right, this was another Earth. That was a great movie. <laughs> no one, uh, uh, what did? I mean, uh, Sphinx gave it an eight out of ten. I think, if I remember correctly. No, he didn't. Another... He didn't give anything. I don't think. Yeah, he did. No way. I think he gave it an eight out of ten. If Sphinx gave it an eight out of ten, I'm impressed. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, he gave it a uh, eight out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> Sphinx, my man, coming through. No. He got a four and a half out of ten. Sorry. I was reading the wrong one. I take back everything I said about Sphinx. <laughs> he gave uh, Fantastic Planet eight out of ten. That's why I got it mixed up. I got the comments because he watched the episode after. Fantastic Planet eight out of ten. Another Earth four and a half. Alex, Sphinx, I, Sphinx, I love you, man. I love you. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm not even being facetious. Like I really like you. You're a cool dude. But I can't, I can't co-sign on that, man. Yeah. So my pick for next week, we haven't really had any complainers since like the first film club episode. But I went with something that's on Netflix. I didn't pick it just because it's on. Netflix. It's another foreign film. So <laughs> you're gonna have to read subtitles again, Alex. I'm sorry. It's but fine. um, something you may like. It's only an hour and sixteen minutes long. I mean, I'm okay with that too. But it's something we haven't done just like the last week. It's a black and white movie. And it is The Eyes of My Mother came out in 2016. And uh, it's a neat little horror movie. So it's a horror movie. Yeah. Cool. And I said this, I think, in the last episode. I'm gr- I'm going to say... It's not the best thing that I've ever picked. 
Oh, okay. Well, I'm looking forward to it regardless. It's more on par with Gerald's game. Everything else I've ever picked. Well, let's let's not undersell it. Let's watch it. Let's see what it's yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, it's still you know, yeah, you it's, know. I'm not. I'm. It's. I can't say anything without ruining it. I love a good horror I would go, movie. Yeah. So it's not. It's like a psychological horror. It's not like a slasher. But I like that too. Like some of the best horror movies I've seen are psychological ones. That yeah. like get inside oh. your head and mess with you a little bit. Like Drake, you gonna check it out? Sure. Better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I demand I need to, to see it. a Drake film review in the comments yeah. of the next episode. Yeah. I I'm gonna go ahead and bet a little bit of money that I don't watch it. <laughs> I don't watch anything. He seems like a busy guy. Drake, are, Drake, are you a busy? Two days a week. Drake, are you he a busy works literally guy? Literally two days a week. I know, but he 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 probably works like twenty hours a day those two week, two days. Like he seems like a no busy guy. Shifts. Nah, I, just, I don't know, dude. I don't. I think you're just trolling him. <clears throat> I'm telling a hundred thousand percent the truth. Drake works two eight hour shifts a week, and the rest of his week he hangs out with his girlfriend. Saturday and Sunday, I work. Girlfriends are like. They keep you During busy, the week, man. am I busy 100%? Like, I don't even get home until 10 o'clock at night, and I probably leave 10 o'clock in the day, but, like... So, no, I don't really have time to do stuff, but... See? There you go. Busy. Yeah. But it's... I, I'm I'm not going to say I don't have time to do stuff, because I'm doing what I enjoy, and I'm with my girlfriend, obviously, but... Yeah. Still busy, Annie, so, you know... Stop. I mean, my bad. Make fun of the virgin. I right, gotta move. move it. <laughs> <Andy>. <laughs> Moving the sports. We had the There's biggest news. a little news. bit of anger behind that, too. <laughs> <laughs> it, was right. a, it was a meme. <laughs> but uh, Anthony Davis got traded. I'm wearing my Anthony Davis bandwagon jersey. Start my Zion jersey. Um. So they just get traded to the New Orleans Hornets, New Orleans Pelicans, um, and I believe we talked about but a bit yeah, a bit about this on your uh, on uh, your stream. I'm having a, stream. but I believe the Lakers got fleeced and gave up way too much for Anthony Davis. Um, they gave up Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Kyle Hart, Kyle Hart. Wow, I'm really having a stroke. Josh Hart and uh, if the their next five first round picks. Roughly, um, and so their team next year is just gonna be LeBron, Anthony Davis, and then Alex Caruso, and Catavius Caldwell Pope, and Javale McGee. What's your thoughts on the trade, Alex? So I agree. I know a lot of people who watch my channel probably have already heard me say this, but I really do feel like the Lakers. This is literally. You're at the blackjack table. You put it all in on one hand. You haven't even gotten dealt a card yet, right? I mean, yeah. like you just like you, you're going all in, not knowing how it's going to work out. Like they went so hard in that they don't have enough room to sign another max contract. And right now, the rumor is that it's they're like, trying to offload current yeah, contracts. They're offload, yeah. yeah, they're trying to uh, offload current contracts so that they can. One, complete this trade before July 30th. And two, so that they could maybe get room for a mid-level or a max player. Which I think would be a good move for them. My problem with this one is... I don't see this working out for two reasons. One, the West is hyper-competitive. And I, I get it, Anthony Davis and LeBron, it sounds like a dream team. And if you're yeah. playing NBA 2K, it would definitely be a dream team. But the reality is, I, I still think Houston's going to be back next year. I know it's really fun to pile on them and say like things are going terribly. But I still feel like they're going to be a very competitive team next year because they have James Harden. And for that reason yeah. alone, I think they're competitive. And then Golden State's not going anywhere. I don't care if if it's just Steph Curry and, and friends, like I feel like they're still going to be 
you know, competitive. And I, I get what LA is doing. This is a one year gamble. They feel like the West is wide open because of the injuries to golden state and the dysfunction in Houston. But I, I also have concerns about Anthony Davis's health. He, he's a guy who's often injured. He plays hurt a lot of the time. Credit to him for that. But he's also missed quite a few games in his young career. I kind of wonder how that's going to work. I also wonder how he's going to work under the pressure of a major market. Things get magnified out in L.A. more than just about anywhere other than New York. So I don't know, man. It was a lot of assets to give up for a guy who could literally walk next offseason. I don't think he no. will. But uh, if you're the Pelicans, you got a really good haul for a guy who didn't want to play for you. Yeah. And there's already rumblings that they're shopping that number four pick. They, they'll definitely trade it. Um, we're recording this the day before the, the draft, by the way, for those. I, I saw a scenario where they traded the four pick and tried to move up to the two. I don't think it happens. I, you know what? It's it's an option. And here's what I love about what the Pelicans have now. They have options, loads of options, whereas before they didn't have those. So We'll talk about it in a second where I'm going to try to predict the entire draft and I'll let you react based off. But I think the Pelicans trade back with the fourth pick. Why not? Because what, what is available at four, they don't need. I mean, uh, might as well. We have the Mike Conley trade, which speaking but Drake, of the, Drake, what were Drake's thoughts on the so, Anthony oh, Davis trade? Drake loves basketball. What you think on Anthony Davis? My thoughts on Anthony Davis. I'm interested to see how he plays with LeBron. I think that a lot of NBA players have a lot of pressure put on them playing with LeBron. I mean, you're literally stepping on the court with the greatest basketball player at this time. So it's a lot of pressure. And they there's a lot of people that interviews have come out and said that they hate playing with LeBron because, I mean, they're they're put second on that team. Yeah. You know, someone like Kyrie. He wanted to be the star of the show. You can't do that when you're on the team with LeBron James. Yeah, you got some titles out of it, but it's true. You want to be the star. You can't play with LeBron. So I'm interested to see how Anthony Davis goes from being the best player on his team to the second best player. And I'm also interested just to see how if they add any other assets to the to the Lake Show. The Lake Show. I haven't heard that in that's a while. A, that's a nickname. <laughs> it got awful. Nickname. So, so moving on, we have the Mike Conley trade. Speaking of the West being, this makes Utah my favorite to win the West. R.I.P. Next to the Denver Nuggets, the yeah. Jazz literally gave up pretty much for Mike Conley, a point guard still. I mean, he's on the back end of his prime, but he's still playing amazing. Thirty-one. I bet. Hey, I mean, the only thing this affects Utah is it potentially can affect their future because they threw in a first. They'll probably, t like it's it's protected to where if they make the playoffs, they keep the pick. So it's probably going to turn into a lottery pick in three, four years, whenever the team falls apart because of Mike Conley's age. <laughs> but I don't know. It's a win now scenario. I forgot who said it. But they're talking about like teams like waiting to, to get better. They're like talking about like, you know, the Celtics are, I guess, best sample right now. You can wait as long as you want, but eventually we all die. Yeah. So win now while you can. I mean, the Raptors winning this year is the best example of that. Yeah. Like the Raptors as they were, were a good team. They went deep in the playoffs a few years in a row, actually. And they made a risky move, a splashy move. And it, I mean, for all we know, Leonard might still walk, but it paid yeah. off. You won a championship, so it's all worth it. I mean, if he walks and you get no compensation, you won a championship. Yeah, you can't, you like, you can't sleep on that at all. And Utah making this trade, I think, is a good one for them. Number one, I think Mike Conley has been underrated his entire career. You know, he came out of college. Everybody wanted to talk about Greg Oden, his teammate. Meanwhile, Mike Conley was on that team. And he was a darn good player. He might have been the best player on that Ohio State team. And they went all the way to the national championship. Mike Conley, 
got traded for bits and pieces. Grayson Allen is a non-factor in the NBA right yeah, now. Kyle Korver. Kyle nothing. Korver is probably the best piece that Memphis got back in that. And I would assume that they will flip him because I cannot yeah. imagine that there won't be contenders wanting to get Kyle Korver because he's he's still one of the best three-point well, shooters in the game. A fun fact about Kyle Korver. What's that? 98.7% of his points were off of assist. So he doesn't create his own shot. Literally just catch and shoot. That's who he is. That's his game. But he, he's the best at it. You know, and he has been the best at it for a while in the NBA, like depending on what stat you look at. But like there's a reason why Kyle Cor- Cor- Kyle Korver was on an Olympic team, dude. Like no. there's not a lot of guys who can shoot a set shot like he does. So I would assume there's going to be some contenders calling up one to, to trade for him. Um, I feel like he'll get, he'll be a, a deadline deal. A trade deadline deal. He'll but, stay on Memphis. But to us, me, this the beginning half. Yeah, to me, this felt like a like a salary dump to a to yeah. a point, but like a salary dump with Throw a player. The that, yeah. Also, the, the Grizzlies are getting John Morant, so and they yeah. want to start him. I mean, and I feel like it was just like one of those things where it's a salary dump with a player that can contribute somewhere else, whereas the opposite would be the Houston Rockets with Chris Paul, where they've attempted to dump that salary and teams don't even want them like for free. So yeah. Shouldn't have given that I contract. So to begin with. I thought of a scenario where they could get rid of them today. What's that scenario? Chris Paul and their next five first round draft picks for cash considerations. So basically pull a, a Brock Osweiler deal. Like yeah. literally give up assets to dump a salary. That's the, what else are they gonna do? Apparently, Houston is aggressively trying to get Jimmy Butler. Yeah, with what money? Good luck with that. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna do that. Drake, any thoughts on the Mike Conley trade? Um, I'm gonna miss him. I have his jersey. Yeah. I'll always, I'll always love it. You're a Grizzlies fan, right? Yeah. I seem to remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I I like my favorite. What I'm most excited about is Jay Crowder. I like him. He's a good dude. I like him as a player. He's fun to watch. Fun Boston Celtics. Yeah, Jay Crowder is like so much fun to watch. He loves game. Yeah, he's he's a dog. That's why I like it. <laughs> I like the dog mentality. It's I saw the picture the other day. It's like rest in peace to the grit and grind Grizzlies and yeah. It that's the truth, know, dude. I'll definitely. Miss I'm glad that. I got to see. Mike Conley and Marcus all play. I got to see Marcus all two weeks before he got traded in real life. It was a good team to watch, man. Like that was some old school basketball. Back had Zach Randolph, Marcus all, Tony Allen, yeah. OJ Mayo, Mike Conley. Dude, so beautiful. Zebo was. They, they had a squad, dude. It was ridiculous. It was a really good team. That that's one of those teams like and I'm like I'm sure you guys can think of a lot of teams like this over the years, like those great basketball teams that just never make it to the finals. Like the Phoenix Suns, yeah. the the seven seconds or yeah. less Phoenix Suns, yeah. you know, like those Nash, great teams. Yeah, the, and you're just like they just never got to the finals and it's such a shame. I don't know, but yeah. Mike Conley, he's going to he's gonna kill it for the Jazz, dude. And the Jazz, I, I don't even think they're going to, like, even, like, you were talking about eventually the, the wheels will fall off and they'll be bad again. Lately, a couple the, years. I just don't even think that's going to happen, dude. The, whoever's running the Jazz is doing a great job. They've they been competitive for a long time. Yeah, and they've been competitive for a long time with minimal assets. They lost Gordon Hayward. Everybody thought that team was going to stink. And they yeah. ended up getting through it. Like they could probably last trade back won, for Gordon Hayward if they really last wanted year to. Last year they won. They were the fifth seed. They won fifty games, and only seven games behind the Warriors, and they got incredibly better. Like they're definitely my, they're my favorite to win the conference, unless Denver also takes a step up. Which Denver's a young team. I can see them doing that too. Yeah, I I, I like Denver next year a lot. You know, I didn't mention them earlier. But, I mean, that's a team that I could see being better than the Lakers 
as they're constructed right now. I did the transition to the next topic, so tell me about your predictions for the next NBA draft. So, my prediction for the next NBA draft, it's going to be 100% what happens. It happens tomorrow night, all right? But this is what's going to happen, because, you know, I'm a genius. Uh, first overall pick, the Orleans Pelicans, elect Zion Williamson. Oh, big surprise. Everyone's, everyone's wilding. Second pick, Memphis Grizzlies select John Morant. Third pick, New York Knicks select R.J. Barrett. Pretty typical mock draft so far. Fourth pick, the Atlanta Hawks trade up and select Jarrett Culver, trading the 8 and 10 pick to the Pelicans. And then number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Cameron Reddish. Number six, the Phoenix Suns finally get their point guard in Darius Garland. Number seven, Chicago Bulls get DeAndre Hunter. And then number eight, the Timberwolves trade up to the Pelicans pick at number eight and select Kobe White. Number nine, Washington selects Seku Dumbia. And number 10, the Pelicans select Jackson Hay from Texas. I like it. Lots of trades. Yeah. There could be more. Probably more in real life. I could definitely see Atlanta moving up, though. Rumor is they want to move up real bad. Yeah. I don't know for who, but... Probably Jared Culver. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah. he's. I mean, it's between Jared Culver and DeAndre Hunter. They're very similar players. It just depends on who you value as a better player. And I believe Jared Culver is the better player of the two. Um, but they're super similar. Cool. Um, it's a pretty good mock draft, with, though. With their team, there's no one else that kind of fits it. I'll say I want to gamble on Sekio at four, which I highly doubt that. Because I he might not even go in the lottery. He's an international player. Yeah. International players are kind of weird sometimes to project. Like Giannis is a good example of a guy yeah. who was undervalued. I mean, Giannis was also a twig. That's part of it. But, like, I don't know, dude. Like, international plays is really weird because... Like, Giannis is a good example. Another really good example would be Ricky Rubio that I could point to yeah. of somebody who played at a high level internationally but didn't it didn't really translate to the NBA game. Uh, Brandon Jennings, that's another guy who played internationally, didn't really do well in the yeah, NBA. Yeah, we're going there. Um, who is it? RJ Hampton's doing that now, going overseas. Yeah. LaMelo's doing that now. <laughs> that kid's going to get packed, dude. I'm so sorry. I, I, I've I watched enough game tape on LaMelo Ball. I don't see it. I don't see future NBA player when I watch him play. I just, He's big I don't. now. He grew a ton. I mean, good for him. I've watched him after he grew, and I just I don't yeah. see it. I, I don't know. I Just like Lonzo Ball. I mean, I'm really sorry. I, I, I don't think he's a superstar. Uh, I don't think that he's even going to be a top ten point guard in the league one day. No, I feel player. like I, I feel like, like he's ball. a guy. I like Lonzo Ball for his defense. I like him for his passing ability, and I don't want him that's, shooting at this point in time. I don't want him. Yeah, that's all you want him doing is distributing. And playing defense, no. and if he gets an open look, maybe he takes it. But beyond that, he, he should not be as a scorer. As the second overall pick, <laughs> you, you can rate him as a bust. But now that he's in a new scenario, he's no longer the second overall pick. He's the guy that they got. They traded Anthony Davis with, with a bunch of other people. So he kind of doesn't have the stigma of being a huge draft pick. I think it'll be beneficial for him to go somewhere where the expectations aren't as high. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's like the Markel Fultz trade earlier. It's like, it kind of gets the stigma off his back that he's no longer the guy, like the second overall, first overall pick. You got that right. And I hope Markel Fultz can turn it around for the Magic. I think We're a speaking, change okay. of scenery will help him. The Lakers had three second round overall, second overall picks in a row, and all of them are not on their team anymore. 
D'Angelo Russell, Brandon Ingram, and then Lonzo, Lonzo Ball. I mean, that's what happens when you ravage your entire roster for trades. They would be better if they didn't, if they kept. You're probably right. They would have a better team if they had everyone they traded for Anthony Davis and D'Angelo Russell with LeBron. You're probably right. <clears throat> but unfortunately, the Lakers have a history of always making high risk, yeah. high Rob reward great trades and trying to get the next superstar. And that's just kind of their franchise history. It's worked for them for the most part. When you look at their franchise history, wow. like they've won a lot of championships, obviously. They've had a lot of great years, but I, don't know. I feel like this is the Dwight Howard trade all over again. I, I get the comparison there. I just feel like Anthony Davis is at a different point in his career. He's not coming off of an injury. I don't know. I just think it's going to get too hot headed and it's going to not work. Yeah. There were a lot of aspects of the Dwight Howard trade that people kind of overlooked, I think. Like I don't there's know what the, the Magic got in return from that. Uh, cap space. So the Magic were the number two payroll in the league when they traded Dwight Howard. They got a lot of cap relief. Um, they went from being a team that was in the luxury tax to a team that within a year was the under the cap. And um, like that was one aspect of it. They got some good prospects back. One of them that they traded away for nothing that I thought was a good player was Mo Harkless. I, I mean, I, I really thought Mo Harkless had a had a good potential. Um, but they also got Nick Vucevic as part of that trade, and you know that that paid off long term. And they got some picks. They got a couple picks. So you know, Philly got wow. Philly got shafted on that trade. This too. trade was is huge. There's what? a lot of names that that. Han. Like Andrew Bynum went to Philly and Philly got screwed. Yeah. They Dwight Dwight Howard, Earl Clark, and Chris Duhon to the Lakers. Aaron Aflalo and Al Harrington and a second round pick. And then a twenty fourteen first that turned into Dario Saric to the Magic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Lakers trade Christian Ayinga, Josh McRoberts in the second. Uh, they turned into Wesley Awundu, a pretty solid player to the Magic. I probably mispronounced the last name, but I don't know. Lakers traded uh, Orlando, traded Jason Richardson to the Six. Sixers traded Andre Godala to the Nuggets, and Sixers traded Mo Arklis and Nick Vucevic in a first round pick that turned into Landry Shamit. Yeah, I mean, it was a good trade for the Magic. The downside was they traded Saric for Alfred Payton, and Alfred Payton was a disaster. I don't know why people like that. First off, they and can't shoot. To make this go full circle, Alfred Payton's in Orleans. <laughs> I mean, I, I you know, it, it's probably a better environment for him, but I've just got to say this about Alfred Payton. You couldn't have cut your hair when you were in Orlando. Best in basketball history. It's awful. It was blocking his jump shot, and he was terrible <laughs> shooting the ball. And it was because if you watched him in slow motion, the ball was hitting his hair as he was shooting. He was literally blocking his own shot with his hair. Made and then he shooter. goes to New Orleans, yeah. and he's shooting, he's he's shooting better. And he, he's cut his hair. And it's like, come on, dude. I don't know. Alfred Payton's. Went to a good school, too. Yeah. I don't know. Not an Alfred Payton fan, but hope he works out in New Orleans. I wish him the best. I'm going to call that an episode. Yeah, man. That's DCD uh, 34. And um, real quick, before I let Andy and Drake finish off, I uh, want to remind you guys, t-shirt link in the description, both on the video and the audio version. Patreon link in the description. We only have one tier right now. It's a dollar a month. If you want to give more, Cool. I would appreciate it. Andy would appreciate it. But we decided we were going to stick with just $1 a month right now, one tier. 
we might add uh, more later. If you contribute, you get to vote on Film Club. We're making that a Patreon exclusive. You get early access to the episode, and there's uh, a weekly shout-out. You will get a weekly shout-out from myself and Andy on the podcast. Um, also, uh, audio-only version of the podcast, video version of the podcast. If you're wondering about those, if you're on the opposite platform, go to deadchannelduo.com. All of our links are there. So if you're wondering if like we're on a platform, go to deadchannelduo.com, and we have a link to every single platform that we're on. Uh, oh, yeah. Leave us an iTunes review. I'll give you a shout-out for that, too. Doesn't even have to be a five-star review, but, you know, maybe maybe leave a five-star review anyway. Andy, be anything? Be as brutal as I am with the review. No, because <laughs> then we'll just get a bunch of, like, it was two out of five, but I would watch it anyway. You know, like that kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it, that, it'd be a three out of five. I liked it, but it's, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's average. 2.6 out of 5. The sound is kind of crappy, and the cinematography was average. <laughs> the cinematography is awful. The soundtrack, by the way, literally non-existent. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> dude. You got to plug anything, Drake? Do I have to plug anything? Yeah. Um, M. Drake Bowen on Twitter. I guess Remember that's that. it. It's my life. Are we gonna follow us on letter? Yeah, follow us on Letterbox. Description. I'm at an end hold eighty eight. I'm pretty sure Alex is swordfish. Nah, I think I'm at purple swordfish. A purple on swordfish. Letterbox, yeah. And then uh, Drake is also I'm Drake Bone. I'm pretty sure. I think or I am. Drake Bone. Oh, no, I'll I'm check Letterbox Drake real Bo. fast to correct it. Oh, I'm just a- yeah, yeah. I'm just Andy Holzy. I got all of our things wrong. I'm just Andy Holzy. Drake is Alexander. And Drake is Drake Bowen. With no space. Alright. So anything else, Andy? I mean, there's nothing else to talk about. Oh, well, I'm, I mean, you know, sometimes you want to talk about Boston sports, so. But I know we're in like I mean, that. We're gonna dead drive zone. Tyler Hero and Nikhil Alexander. I mean, it's cool. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Drake, for coming on. Heck yeah. Had a blast. Yeah, it was great having you. We'll have to have you back sometime. Yeah, fun to be a part of. Just let me know. Yeah, everybody type in the comments. Uh, give Drake's Drake will be guest appearance. Episode 999 when I quit. Uh, <laughs> somebody already signed up for that, but Drake can have episode 1,000. 1, um, who was it? <laughs> Spoon Sandwich. Oh, I thought it was... Uh, who's the guy that wanted to be a guest that we wanted to be a guest? <laughs> Chetty? Yeah, Chetty. Yeah, I think... The Chetster was the one who claimed it. I, I feel like, <laughs> and Chetty, if you're out there listening, man, you're you're a cool dude. But I feel like if I bring you on, you're gonna just troll the hell out of me. I <laughs> I, I gotta be completely <laughs> honest. Like, I feel As like he I would just don't, troll me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, Spoon Sandwich has that locked down. If Andy ever quits, I'll just do an episode with Spoon Sandwich, then one with Drake, then I'll do one with like Dumbest Sphinx. I'll get Colby on. Yeah. Uh, I'll just do like a just a like a I'll a get an entire door. yeah just an entire list of just guests after guests eventually Wings yeah I'll just I'll email Wings until he responds to me like yo come on on you know I'll buy you Wendy's chili to come I'm not even making fun of Wings he beat the surgery congratulations Wings <laughs> what. He beat the surgery. He's gaining weight again. No, he's not. He is. He said it on the. Po- he said it on stream. Oh God, I'm so. I feel he so bad for him. Surgery. That's terrible, Congratulations, dude. Congratulations, Wings. No, I feel bad, dude. We I believe you know you knew this entire time. I root for that guy. I really do. I know we talked about not bringing stuff like that up on the show, but like I really root for the guy. I hope it works out for him. Anyway, that's gonna do it for also, Dead Channel Kyle Duo. Also, got a two years probation. Oh, well, good for him. I feel bad for him because he had to, uh, as a notorious gun owner myself who owns way too many guns. No, that got, I, that got he had sponged. To, that, uh, it's fine. He had to give up all his guns, though, bro. Yeah. He had to, so he it, had to give them, them back. He had, oh, he's getting them back? Well, I, maybe the felony will take him away, but the gun part of it got sponged. He had trouble with the gun because one of his guns. But it's because he got his gun painted, and the people that painted it didn't put a new serial number on it. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm gonna uh, plead the fifth on that particular law 
myself. But uh, I will but say... He may get his guns back. I don't know. I hope he gets them back because I know he had a collection that was massive. All I know is he got uh, two years probation and he has to spend two months and halfway home. That's terrible. I mean, what he did was stupid. He's better than but jail time. Yeah, I get that. But, you know... I don't know, man. I, it, the, the gun thing is what really killed me. When I heard he had to turn all those... Because I'm sitting there and I'm looking at, like, I look at my gun save and I'm like, if I had to turn that over, like that'd be like 10 grand worth of stuff just gone. I mean, he still has a flamethrower. Dead John Deo Podcast, episode number 34. We'll see you next week. Peace out, Girl Scouts. <laughs>